Before we get started, I just want to point out that I have 12 of the 14 missiles that this toy came with in 1994. That's not a disclaimer to avoid someone mentioning it in the comments or because it's incomplete. It's absolutely intended as a brag. This thing came out nearly 30 years ago and I still have 12 of the 14 missiles? Where's my Lifetime Achievement Award, Hasbro? Stick me in your daft Hall of Fame. Dreadwing and their partner Smokescreen are from the Transformers Generation 2 line. And how is G2 different to G1? Well, I mean, it's... Hmm, well... You're asking a few questions there, and... Well, look, look, hey, 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 I'm not Chris McFeely, okay? Just because he's my dad doesn't mean I know everything about Transformers. But like all Transformers, should these bad bastards come in their vehicle forms, Dreadwing is a huge stealth bomber, while Smokescreen is a sleek, lithe fighter jet. Dreadwing really is a bit of a beast. Look how big this bomber is, the wingspan on the boy. There's a few gimmicks on him. The main one you may have already noticed is this ridiculous Gatling-style missile launcher. It holds six of our precious, impressive 12 missiles, and you can rotate the back of it to fire each in turn. All right, Repugnus, just stand still here. Ah, oh, do we have to do all six? Of, of course we do. We need to show off each of the features, don't we? All right, okay, hurry up. Ah, <laughs> you missed. The other major gimmick is on Dreadwing's wings. Each wing has three slots you can push a missile into, and on top we've got some buttons, so give them a pop and off they drop. I'm a big fan of the styling here, that dark blue verging into indigo even, the teal highlights setting off against those splashes of red, it's a good Decepticon colour scheme. Smokescreen is much smaller in comparison, but he's pleasingly svelte as a fighter jet who shares those same great colours. No real gimmicks to speak of, but there's a nice bit of landing gear, and you can honk these two big missile launchers onto either side, which I highly recommend if you can contend with the most ridiculous hair triggers of all time. He even looks pretty good from underneath, which is a first for a jet in this entire franchise. So, the junior investigators amongst you may have noticed this large slot on the back of Dreadwing, and please let me be the first to congratulate you on that. So, yep. It's happening, we can combine Dreadwing and Smokescreen by sliding Smokescreen deep into the willing orifice on the big lad's back. And this does absolutely nothing but fill that big gap. So who's to say what they're getting out of it? You know, live and let live, I always say. It's when you remove Smokescreen from the back that things get interesting as it triggers an auto-transforming gimmick in the wings. Press the buttons on the back end and they open up to reveal <gasps> tank treads. Then we're given the Gatling gun, the old 180, and we're in tank territory, folks. I think... I think on paper I shouldn't like this, but I do. It's so substantial and ridiculous that it's hard to hate. There's also this weird mode I saw on TF Wiki that I was almost sure was just there to mess with me, but it is from the Legends manga, so here it is. This time definitely to avoid someone mentioning it in the comments. I mean, it's something. You know, did it shut you up? Don't tell me in the comments. So let's get these lads into the robot modes. Dreadwing is fairly simple, but he does have some unique moments. We're untabbing the legs and swinging them down folding out the feet before cracking the front half down and flipping out the head. The real tricky part is making sure you fold the Gatling gun arm the right way to make sure it sits over the right shoulder. The arms are also covered by these strange double tab system things, so you have to pinch those to get loose. The end result is pretty wild. What a big chonker Dreadwing is. He's super top heavy, which makes posing him almost impossible. But when you look this good, you can't stay mad, especially as it's not often I see my own body type in a Transformer. I mean, look at this light piping too. It's lovely. He absolutely looks like there should be a battery compartment for lights and sounds in this behemoth chest, but unfortunately, it's not the case. Still, a wonderfully different toy and fun every step of the way. Where Dreadwing goes for bombastic, chunky fun, Smokescreen brings some intricate elegance. Smokescreen isn't built like most jet mode transformers in that his arms make up the back end of the jet, and there are a few surprises in there like spinning the nose cone around and the collapsing upper torso. And look at this little lad, talk about a wee stunner. Again, great light piping and he offers up in poseability what Dreadwing can't. What a great team, you know, having launchers in each hand fills him out a little bit too. I do dislike how simple those hands are though, they feel a little bit too simple for a set otherwise of such high quality. No combining mode when they're robots, I'm afraid, folks. I'd hasten to call them a combiner team, exactly, but it's nice that such partners can be wholly different body shapes and still come across so well as a unit. Dreadwing and Smokescreen are perhaps... Hold on, let me check. Okay, with the exception of G2 Optimus Prime, definitely my favourite toys in the G2 line. Really different, wonderfully unique wee buggers with so much play value, you'll be finding pound coins in your vomit. Okay, cheerio!